Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen to prepare one of my very favorite quick bites. I think I have ever had in my entire life. And it is very famous in Mexico City. It is so famous that it has now kind of gone all over the world. It's contemporary Mexican food. It's not the traditional kind that I do often. You probably know me more for traditional, but this is something you just can't pass up. This is the tuna tostada from the very famous fish restaurant in Mexico City called Contra Mar. It is just spectacular and it will surprise you. We're gonna start with a chunk of raw tuna because it's just raw marinated tuna on the tostada. You, I, I, I will say in the recipe that you might want to get a piece that's from the belly of the tuna if you can because that's going to be about an inch thick. This is actually a piece from the loin and it's two inches thick. So we have a kind of two by two by four. The reason that I'm telling you the proportions here is because it will make a difference in how these tostadas look at the end. If that doesn't interest you very much, a piece of tuna, a fresh piece of tuna, the kind that we would call um, sashimi grade or sushi grade would be what you're looking for. So I'm going to cut it into thin slices. I'm going to first stand it on its edge there and cut right through to make two one inch slabs. So there we've got like our four by four piece that's one inch thick. And then I'm just going to cut these into about eighth of an inch pieces. Now here's where you can learn something from the sushi chefs who will always tell you to have your knife go in one direction only. Start up by the, the butt end of the knife as I am doing here and then slice all the way through for a beautiful perfect slice. This is a dish that is inspired of course by Sushi, which you might not associate with Mexico, but people in Mexico, especially Mexico City, really love, love, love their sushi. Okay, we've got the beautiful slices of fresh tuna there. Now, the marinade may surprise you. Um, as I said, people in Mexico City love their sushi, and this is a small amount of of soy sauce and a small amount of orange juice mixed together. So I'm just gonna stir them a little bit together just to mix them and then they become this really quick marinade for the pieces of tuna which I am going to dip on both sides and then sort of more or less shingle out here. Okay. I got my flexible cutting board over in the sink. I wiped off my knife. And now we're going to do the garnish that goes on to this. Well, I've got some a pot of oil going over here that I'm heating up because we're going to make some fried leeks. Um, it's getting close to the 350 degrees that I want it to be. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Um, the leek you're only going to work with the white part of the leek and you're going to cut it crosswise in about eighth of an inch slices and then put it in, put those slices into a bowl of water and break them apart into little rings. You want to make sure that all of the the rings are separated because when we're frying, you don't want any doubled up pieces. Now the next thing, because we are going to fry here, uh, we have to put these onto paper towels and dry them off very well. Um, it, it, they dry pretty fast, but you'll see when we fry them that they will bubble up, but we want them to be as dry as possible here. And I'm still finding some that were not separated completely. Okay, so that's looking good now. Um, any doubled up ones won't fry crisp, just know that. And I'm gonna take this towel and then just gently pat them, roll them back and forth. I'm not trying to break them or anything like that, just get them dry. Okay, I'm looking at my temperature here. I've got about 360 degrees, which is what I'm looking for for the frying of these. This will go really fast and we're going to do it in two batches. I've got paper towel lined tray here ready to receive them after they have been fried. <music> When you put the 
leak pieces in there. They'll boil up really, the oil will come boiling like up at the top. And that is why I'm doing it in a deep pan like this, because they always do that. Just about an inch of oil. You'll notice that the temperature, I always work with a deep fry thermometer, so I'm looking at the temperature. It will always drop when you put the leeks in there. I had it at about 360 degrees. It dropped all the way down to 300 degrees. Um, but that's actually good because it makes this a more gentle fry. But you want to start at the 360 degrees. Um, and then stir it for, it'll take about two minutes or so. And when they start to brown, that's when you take them out. They won't be quite crisp yet, but they'll crisp up as they cool down. Okay, I know I said quick bite and you're looking at me frying leeks going, this is not a quick bite. So let me tell you what I do when I wanna make this a quick bite. Um, first of all, I'm gonna show you how to fry tostadas. So I'm gonna come back to this in just a second. But if I am going to make these as a quick bite, I always do the fried shallots that you can find at Asian markets. They're really delicious and they work sort of the same way that the crispy leeks would, would do. And now I'm gonna talk about tostadas because a tostada is a fried tortilla until it's crisp. If you really wanna make it quick, then you would choose the small tostadas that are already fried that you can find in any Mexican grocery store and a lot of other grocery stores as well. That would actually be my first choice in this because when you buy the small tortillas, these are intended for table use. If you fry them, they almost always come out greasy, even if you leave them to dry out some on the countertop. They just are not the right tortilla for frying crisp. In our restaurant, we can buy from our tortilleria a very dry, thin tortilla. And I'm gonna work with that so I can show you what that's like. But you'll notice that if you just look at it, um, that there's a lot of flex in it, meaning that it's a much more coarsely ground corn. Now for making these little beautiful tuna tostadas, they should be small, not necessarily the really big tortillas. I'm watching my temperature here and now I'm getting close to my 360 degrees, so I'm gonna turn it down some. Um, so I, I like the smaller size, so I'm just using a mold here to go around these guys and I'm gonna cut a circle out of them. You have to kind of do this shaving little by little the tortilla off like that. Let's see if mine turn out looking pretty. If you kind of hack them up, they'll, they'll, they'll look really, um, really coarsely cut on the edges. So I like to cut around them and then kind of go back and shave it to make sure it looks really nice and, and round. Yeah, I think they're looking pretty good here. A couple of areas over here that aren't as nice, but I'm kind of finicky about those kinds of things. <laughs> okay, so we've got our oil here and it's hot. Again, you want something like 360 degrees. These are intended, this tortilla is intended to be fried crisp. So when I drop it in here, it will just bubble up right away and it, but it won't puff. Once the bubbling really slows down, they are ready to take out. These fry much, much faster than a table tortilla would also. So if you ever want to make your own chips or your own tostadas, my recommendation is don't unless you can go to a tortilleria and buy the specially formulated thin dry tortilla that really does fry up crisp and not greasy at all. Okay, we're ready to put these babies together. Here is the part of, the, of this dish that is so incredibly famous. It is chipotle mayonnaise. Now you're gonna say, I have heard of chipotle mayonnaise for a long, long time. Well, we're talking 20 some years ago when nobody had heard of the chipotle mayonnaise. And this is the restaurant that started the whole thing. So I'm gonna take some chipotle here and a little bit of mayonnaise. This is a large chipotle, so I'm just gonna use one. And I, I usually will do this 
by cutting crosswise like that and then just rocking and chopping back and forth until I get really fine pieces. I don't worry about the seeds because I think that they actually are an added texture that I like a lot. So once I get that very finely chopped, I'm going to put it into the mayonnaise there. You can put as much or as little of the chipotle into the mayonnaise as you would like. All righty. No seasoning there. Everything is already seasoned. I'm going to use a slightly smaller spoon here to smear some of this, about a tablespoon or so of the chipotle mayo on the bottom of a tostada. And then on top of it, we'll go a couple of pieces of this tuna. Now let's just see how that's going to fit on here. I think that's going to look beautiful. They're a little bit long for this, so we could trim them up if we wanted to. Now the next thing that we have to put here is a little slice of avocado. And you know this trick, I, I assume, that you can cut right straight down through and leaving the skin on there. It means that you're going to have a protected slice. So let's do a couple of beautiful little pieces of avocado now on the top of this like that. And you can put your crispy leeks, which I am going to salt because they've been fried and they need a little bit of that salt on the top. This would be a great place for a finishing salt. You can do those over the top. You could do them underneath. I like them over the top of the avocado there. And then we have a little wedge of lime that can go along with this. Some people will put some lime in that marinade, but I don't like the lime in the marinade because it starts making ceviche out of that really beautiful tuna. So we'll put that alongside it there. And now I'll just form all the rest of these beautiful little tostadas. I tell you, my mouth is watering so bad I can hardly talk, but I got to address the tuna, right? I mean, where do you get sashimi quality tuna? Well, here's my suggestion. First of all, it's probably not going to be in a grocery store. You're going to have to go to a fishmonger. But if you're in a grocery store, look in the frozen fish area. Sometimes they'll have blocks of tuna, perfect for this, that are sashimi quality and they have been flash frozen. You just have to defrost them right. Defrost them in the refrigerator overnight and you can make these fabulous Contramar tuna tostadas at your house.